Welcome one more time to the house of Dua, the channel from which you learn about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his creation, his message, his messenger, and his chosen religion of Al Islam. The channel from which you learn how to live successfully in the life we live now and how to return back to Allah for a greater success on the day of accountability. My dear brothers and sisters, today we are coming to you with a very intriguing question. A question that will make the jaws of most of us cringe. A question that will make some of us uncomfortable. A question that is so important for us as a collective if we are truly serious as Muslims. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, that question is how is Islam in your family? How is Islam in your household? Would you say that Islam is growing in your household? Or would you say that Islam is dying in your household? And if it's dying, are you contributing to the death of Islam? Does it concern you at all? Are you worried about it? My dear brothers and sisters, this question has become necessary because many of us are sitting idly by watching Islam to be eroded in their families. And this is a shame for many of us, unfortunately. I'm talking of a situation nowadays where you come into some families, only the parents, mother and father, are now practicing Muslims. Where are the children? They have gone into other religions. And when you ask, they tell you, well, we are now in a modern society. Children can do whatever they like. Or, well, children no longer listen to parents. Or, well, they are mature enough to make their decisions. You are right. My dear brothers, my dear sisters, your parents are no longer alive. They worked hard to make you Muslim. They gave back to you as a Muslim. They raised you as Muslim. And they expect you to continue that tree of life, of true guidance, so that you will join them in Afira, in the house of Allah, known as Jannatul Fedas. Today, you have become an assault on that lineage. You have become a problem. And you are aware of it and you are not doing anything about it. That's why we are using hard words today to remind ourselves of our failing responsibility when it comes to Islam. Yes, many of whom we talk about the enemies of Islam. Those who are outside criticizing Islam or attacking Muslims. Those who are telling us that we are in the wrong religion. But in actual fact, the worst enemy of Islam is you. You, who is allowing Islam to die in your home. Why you have the ability to save it from that death? As you are still alive, now you have that time and ability to save it from dying in your home. It must not die while you are still alive. You have to do something about it. This is why we are raising this very important question. My dear brothers, my dear sisters, do not feel bad if we are addressing it this way. But it's an issue that is of tremendous importance to all of us. Yes, we are today asking you the question, how is Islam in your home? But trust me, we are not the only ones who we ask you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we ask you. The interrogating angels in the grave will definitely ask you. They will ask you, what religion did you follow? What did you worship? What prophet was your role model? And what direction did you face? They definitely will ask you these questions. Before you meet Allah on the day of accountability, and he will ask you, what was your condition? How did you come to live in this life? In spite of the time he gave to you, you allow Islam to die in your presence. Or you yourself will die as a non-Muslim. And Allah, Allah, ya yishuraka abi. Where
Allah will forgive any other sin that you may have committed and why you live on this planet. No matter how serious that sin is, if you ask for forgiveness, He will forgive you. But for you to die and leave this planet without turning to recognize Allah as the only one to be worshipped, you didn't ask for forgiveness for the sin of shirk associating partnership with Allah and you die a non-Muslim, then you have nowhere to go. Allah will not forgive that sin. That's why he warned us seriously. Do not let that meet you in any other form or shape, in any other kind of religion, except in the religion of submission, surrender to Allah's one order. Today, we are facing an ugly phenomenon of watching our young children leave Islam into other religions. How comfortable is that for you? How would you allow your children to leave the light into darkness? Yes, this is what it represents. That's what Allah said in the Quran. I'm not the one who said it. Those are the ones who have sold their hood, their guidance, to purchase misguidance. They sold their light to purchase darkness. They sold their akhira to purchase dunya. And they sold their success to purchase their failure. That's the way Allah described it in the Quran. My dear brothers, my dear sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted us opportunity to multiply ourselves in number. And the Prophet pleaded with us, go out and have as many children as you can take care of. I want my ummah to be more than the ummah of the generations that pass when we meet Allah on the day of our counterweight. Which means as far as the Prophet is concerned, number, quantity is also important when it comes to Jannah. My dear brothers, my dear sisters, let us take this matter seriously. It's not out of your hand yet. If it means begging your children, if it means begging and begging them to come back to Islam, do so. Whatever means you can use to entice them, do so. What about yourself? There are many of us nowadays who call themselves Muslims. Either they were born into Islam or converted into Islam. But now, for reasons best known to them, Either because they don't have money, I'm poor, or I don't have anybody to help me. They allow themselves to abandon Islam into other faiths. While there are others who still call themselves a Muslim. But where do you find them? The company of those who are non-Muslims. When he hears this call to Salat, he's ashamed to own up as Muslims. When he dresses to a function, he's ashamed to be seen as a Muslim. We have many people like that. Remember, if you are doing any of this, you are contributing to the death of Islam in your household. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, without you, Islam will grow. Why? He is the one. Arasala Rasulahu Belhuda Wadil Hakko. Liyozehirahu Allah Dene Koli. Walao Karihal Mosherekun. Walao Karihal Kafiru. Whether you like it or not, this din has been established by Allah. It will prevail over other deans. In the world we live, whether those who associate partnership with Allah like it or not, whether the disbelievers like it or not, that's the plan of Allah. But at the same time, He has assigned responsibility to you to work hard to be an agent for Islam, agent of expansion, of growth, so that this religion will prevail. But you have turned yourself into an agent of watching Islam to fade away from your family. If you sustain the light of Islam in your home, and I sustain the light of Islam in my home, and all of us sustain the light of Islam in our homes, then Islam will grow. But if we watch one child, two children, three children to leave Islam, either because of marriage, or because of money, or because of traveling abroad, or because of going to politics, at the end of the day, the household name that used to answer the name of a Muslim will be answering a different name. That's an ugly situation you don't want to see. That's why we are bringing you verses 132 to 134 of Surah Al-Baqarah to you today. A perfect example given to us of those. And the Amallahu alayhim in and nebiyina was with the kina was sure da. Oswali hina wa hasmu laika rakita. We tell Allah every day. Eh dina sirat ali mustakim. Sirat ala dina an amta alayhim. Allah guide us to the straight path, the path of those whom we love. 
not the part of those who have gone astray. There are examples of such people whom Allah loves. One of them is Ibrahim alayhi salam. The other one is Yaqub alayhi salam, the grandchild of Ibrahim alayhi. You see how sustainability is important? Ibrahim didn't just cut the religion off from himself. He made sure that his children acquired the religion, and his children made sure that their own children, who became the grandchildren of Ibrahim alayhi salam, they acquired the same religion. And from there on and on and on and on and on, until he came to your turn. Now you want to turn it off. You want to turn off a flowing tap. So that your environment will run dry. That's what we are trying to do. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive you. There are prophets and messengers of Allah that Allah describes as people he loves, guided them to the straight path. That's the way he wants us to go. Two of them we are bringing to you today are Ibrahim alayhi salam and Yaqub alayhi salam. What did they do when they were raising their children? They know very well that this dunya, there's no profit here. They were more concerned about the akhirah. While they were still alive, they made sure. They had an undertaking from their children to continue this faith, to continue in this straight path. Verse 132 of Surah Al-Baqarah says, Wa waswa abiha ibrahim unbenihi wa yaqub ya benihiya inna la astafa ala kumudina wa la tamutun ila watu muslimu Ibrahim alayhi salam and his grandson Yaqub alayhi salam, both of them enjoined upon their children. Waswa abiha means they obligated it upon their children. They impressed it upon their children to make sure they hold on to this religion of worshiping of one God. And they warned their children for Lata Mutum Naila want to Muslim do not deviate from this religion and enter into a religion in which death will meet you. I'm going to show her that is in her daughter, Yakuba, and my heart is called Ali Penny. Mata Budu, Nami Badi, Kalu, Nabudu, Ila, Kawaila, Bikes, Oburahi, Ois, my, Ois, Hako, Ila, Hang, Wai, Down, Wanahan, Long, Muslim. Were you there when Yaku was about to leave? When he gathered his children? To have an undertaking from them. And he asked them, What are you going to do after I'm gone? They didn't say they were going to politics. They didn't say they were going to sporting arena. They didn't say they were going to acquire dunya. They said, What? You are going to continue in your deen, in the worship of one God, the worship of the God of your grandfather Ibrahim, of your father Isaac, and your uncle Ismail. One God. That's the one we are going to stand by. That's the one we are going to worship. We shall continue as Muslims. That's what I said. That is the example you need to follow. This is the example of a good generation that have passed. They have gone with their deeds. You are now with your deed. And you are watching your house to die of Islam. Allah says, You will not be held accountable for what they did. And they will not be held accountable for what you do. Therefore, make haste while the sun shines. Redeem your image. Save the image of your family. Save the heritage that your parents handed over to you. Don't allow Islam to die in your hand. And that's what Allah says. Woman, you have to me. And then he fire mood. Whoever allow Islam to be reversed in his home, or whoever reversed himself from Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if such people don't correct themselves and they die in that condition, you allow Islam to die in your home, then everything you have done in this life habitat is wasted. And such people, they will be companions of the hellfire and they will be there forever. May Allah save us from that. That's how serious this problem is. And that's why we are reminding all of us that we must work hard to sustain Islam in our home. We must not allow the light of Islam to extinguish in our homes. We must not allow our children to deviate from Islam and continue to wallow in ignorance. Many of them made mistakes. We need to call them to order. We need to remind them that this is a heritage we cannot afford to allow to waste away.
Mais là, il faut vivre à sens. 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 Mais là, il faut vivre à sens.